Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Zijian from ByteDance System Technologies and Engineering Team. And today's topic is Leverage Homa, Enhancing Homa Linux for Efficient RPC Transportation. Uh, here's the agenda. So firstly, I will give you a quick review of Homa, along with its uh, limitations. And then I, would, I will talk about how we enhance Homa congestion control and stream RPC. And finally, I will talk about future improvements and conclusion. Let's begin. Um, so why TCP is wrong for data center? TCP is designed for wide area networks. Its connections create high space and time overheads. Its stream orientation is awkward for applications which actually care about the delivery and the latency of messages instead of packets. Its fair scheduling increases tail latency for all message sizes. Its sender-driven congestion control ensures buffer occupancy at high loads. And it doesn't take advantage of in-network priorities. It requires in-order delivery, which restricts the opportunities for load balancing on both um, network hardware side and host software side. And here's the HOMA. HOMA is designed for data center networks with extremely low latencies. It's connectionless. There's no connection cost, no long life connection state. It's message-based protocol, which means on each returning of read in the applications, the applications can get a whole message. HOMA tries to approximate SRPT, which is shortest remaining process time first on both sender and receiver side. And it also uses in-network priorities. It has receiver-driven packet scheduling for better usage of, buf of buffer. And finally, it has overcommitment for better throughput. Here is the overview of HOMA. For senders, each outgoing message is divided into two parts, scheduled back packets and unscheduled packets. <laughs> unscheduled packets can be sent blindly while scheduled packets has to be sent uh, when it gets explicit grants from receiver side. As for receivers, they will send grants wisely to prioritize short messages. So this is the, over, this is the overview of HOMA, and then we will talk about more details. For the senders, for message less than unscheduled bytes, they will be sent blindly. For most of other messages, which is larger than unscheduled bytes, there's a pacer thread which monitors the NIC backlog and transmits packets from a throttled list to NIC in SRPT order. And when the packet is sent out, now is, is the moment for in-network priorities to take effect. Senders will assign appropriate priorities to the message according to the instruction from receivers with appropriate short messages, uh, with, with appropriate priorities for short messages. Short messages will bypass queued packets for long messages, which can avoid the head of line block in the middle of the network. And for the sender packet scheduling, it mostly de depends on a configuration called RTT bytes. RTT bytes is a very important manually set config in HOMA. In general, a sender must transmit enough bytes blindly to cover the round trip time to the receiver, including software over, overheads on both ends. During this time, the receiver can return explicit uh, scheduling information to control future transmissions without introducing additional de delays. We refer to this, this amount of data as RTT bytes, which is the length of the, of the unscheduled packets. So after the receiver gets a data packet from the sender, it will collect information of the message, such as the total length and the remaining bytes of the message, and then send grants with RTT bytes to the sender with the shortest remaining bytes. And actually, the receiver doesn't only send one grant to the shortest message. It will send a limited number of grants to multiple senders. That's called overcommitment. The reason why we need overcommitment is that 
when a receiver sends a grant to a sender, the sender might not respond to the grant immediately because the granted message might not be the shortest one in the sender side, like sender one. In order to compensate for unresponsive senders and fully utilize the bandwidth, receivers will send limited number of grants to multiple peers. As a result, although some buffer might build up due to the overcommitment, it's good for the throughput. So that's, the, uh, that's all for the introduction of HOMA, and then uh, I will talk about the limitations. HOMA has in inefficient pipelining for large, for large messages. Since HOMA is a message-based protocol, while ensuring complete message delivery, it hinders efficient pipelining. As a result, for large RPC messages, HOMA is not as good as TCP. And HOMA does not have standard socket API interface, so it's not easy to uh, like integrate HOMA into existing RPC network. And there's no long-lived RPC for stream RPC. Uh, consisted, consisted of many home RPCs, which in, it will incur the overhead of creating and reclaiming multiple home RPCs. And HOMA's performance is very sensitive to RTT bytes configuration. Fine tuning this volume is very crucial for HOMA's optimal performance. But manually config, config this RTT bytes configuration on each machine can be very inconvenient. Currently, a single preset value is applied to all peers, which is not enough for diverse RTT and receiver downlink bandwidth. And HOMA has weak congestion control when RTT is larger than 20 microseconds. With large RTT, RTT bytes will be a large volume. As a result, most of the packets will be unscheduled packets. So the congestion control will malfunction but in this time, if we lower, lower the RTT bytes, it will not be able to cover um, RTT, and it, it, it's not good for the throughput. And HOMA cannot coexist harmoniously with TCP. If we want to apply HOMA in, in practice, we need to gradually transfer the traffic of TCP to HOMA. It's unavoidable that HOMA needs to coexist with other protocols. But HOMA assumes that the bandwidth is totally used by itself. If the bandwidth is shared by other protocols, HOMA may be over generous on unscheduled bytes and over grants scheduled bytes. And finally, HOMA inactively handle incast. HOMA assumes that the most severe forms of incast are predictable because they are self-inflicted by outgoing RPCs. And HOMA assumes the incast where several machines simultaneously send requests to one server is rare. So HOMA does very limited things to solve this problem. And here's the figure uh, of the traffic congestion caused by incasting. When detecting congestion, it's essential to dynamically adjust the unscheduled window to prevent further congestion. So we think that static congestion window is insufficient because of the mentioned limitations. Currently, both unscheduled window and scheduled window are set by RTT bytes. However, they really need different values. For unscheduled bytes, it is used by the sender to define maximum bytes of packets allowed to be sent to a peer without permission. It is based on peer side bandwidth and real-time RTT. Scheduled window is used by the receiver to define the number of bytes granting for scheduled bytes received by, it, by itself. It is based on local bandwidth and real-time RTT. As a result, a fixed one for all RTT bytes is not a good option. RTT bytes need to be dynamic. So then we will talk about how we enhance HOMA congestion control. So here we try to address some of the issues with a new congestion control strategy. The dynamic per peer adjustable window algorithm uh, consists of three parts. Real-time peer RTT de detection, RTT informed congestion detection, 
And finally, adaptive um, window adjustments based on congestion. So firstly, for the uh, RTT detection, we will try to send an um, RTT probe packet each one millisecond and calculate the RTT recent, which is, a, which is the real-time real RTT, according to the RTT probe response packet. RTT is a, it's affected by other traffic running on the same switch due to buffer sharing. In this process, we will record, we will also record the RTT minimum, which will be used for further window adjustment. And now we have the real-time uh, PRRTT. We can use it as a re re reflection of the status of the network traffic. We define RTT low to be the low, low bound of RTT, which means um, there's no congestion. And RTT mid to be the midpoint of RTT to represent a fair amount of traffic. And RTT high as a sign of the congestion. And we will, and in, theor in, in theory, unscheduled window should be calculated by real-time RTT multiply peer link MPPS. But actually, uh, in order to make the unscheduled window a more stable volume, we use another volume, RTT unscheduled, to calculate the unscheduled window. Basically, when there is no congestion, we, we give RTT unscheduled a relatively high volume. When it's possible to have congestion, we, linear, we linearly decrease the volume of RTT unscheduled to a very small volume. And here's the figure of the re relationship between RTT recent and RTT schedule. And finally, we will use this volume to calculate the real unscheduled window. And here is another heuristic op optimization on sender side. The sender will maintain a variable called unscheduled ratio. If the ratio is less than 40% and the pather throttle list is not empty, which means the sender is like busy with handling the scheduled bytes, we will adjust the unscheduled window to a smaller volume. And now for receiver side, we set three times of RTT minimum to RTT grants and use this volume to calculate the scheduled window. And now for scheduled window, uh, instead of using peer uh, link MPPS, we now use local link MPPS along with the RTT grant to calculate the scheduled window. RTT grant is kept at a relatively high volume to make packets sent at a constant rate. It will help to reduce um, the P99 latency for large messages. So that's all for uh, con uh, congestion control enhancement. And, uh, and we assume that this uh, enhancement uh, can help the HOMA to be totally independent to RTT bytes configuration. Instead of fixed and static RTT, we now have real-time RTT. And this optimization can also help HOMA harmoniously coexist with other protocols like TCP. HOMA can be aware of the existence of other protocols traffic by feeling the, the, tur the turbulence of RTT. And now HOMA can actively handle in-cast in-cast can be re reflected by high RTT, and then senders can adjust <clears throat> the unscheduled window dynamically. And then I will show you the result of this uh, enhancement. Firstly, uh, this is the environment of our, of our test bed. We have an environment with 25 gigabit network and another environment with 100 gigabit network. Mm. We use the same workload in reference to to do the test. Since HOMA congestion control enhancements only have a trivial effect when message size is very small, we will focus on workload W4, W5, and other fixed, and other fixed size long messages. Test application is CP node, CP node. It's a program to test the performance, including throughput and latency for HOMA or TCP. In our test, we mainly tweak some parameters for clients to adjust the behavior of the client node. Firstly, we will adjust workload, uh, the workload to run the test, and then we will, we will adjust ports for clients, the number of ports on which to send requests. And here's the setup of our basic performance. 
So we have one Homa server and one Homa client. Um, so here's the figure of the throughput of basic performance in 25 gigabits network. Um, in this figure, the access represents the workload type and the y-axis represents the throughput. The, op the optimized HOMA is able to make throughput performance increase about 5% to 18% for large messages in 25 gigabits network. And this figure is for throughput for 100 gigabits network. Uh, and and uh, like wise the 25 gigabits network we uh, the, the optimized homa has 5% uh, to 14% performance gain on large message throughput and now for latency on every um, workload optimized homa had slightly better latency compared with uh, the va the vanilla one and for 100 gigabits network um, Optimized HOMA is better than vanilla HOMA on nearly every workload. But for the last workload, uh, the P50 of uh, vanilla HOMA is better than optimized HOMA. But, uh, but we have better P99 uh, latency. Okay. Um, so that's it for basic performance. And then we are going to like uh, test if our uh, enhancements can uh, solve the in-cast challenge. And here is the setup. So, so now we have one HOMA server and six HOMA clients to like kind of simulate the in-cast where uh, multiple clients send requests to the server simultaneously. Here's a, the here's a result. The main purpose of this test is to see whether optimized HOMA can avoid buffer overlim over limits in the in-cast situation. Under the W5 workload conditions, the vanilla HOMA has buffer overlim over limit, as you can see from the burst of the P99 latency. And in contrast, the optimized HOMA can handle these challenges. And then we want to test if HOMA can ha harmoniously coexist with TCP. In this test, we have one HOMA server compared with one TCP server. And then uh, in host B, we have three HOMA clients and three TCP clients. We want to observe the, the impact of sharing HOMA traffic with other protocols on the same link and switch ports. So here's the, uh, here's the result. Um, under the same workload, optimized HOMA paired with TCP has higher total throughput than vanilla HOMA with TCP. The, dynam the dynamic window adjust me mechanism equips HOMA with the ability to feel the traffic ni initiated by other protocols, dynamically re regulating its window according to the network status. And here's, uh, and here's the latency. Like the result of in-cast test, the optimized algorithm solves the buffer overlimit challenges under the W5 workload. Whereas the traditional HOMA protocol has significant latency burst due to buffer over limit. And that's all for the uh, HOMA congestion control enhancements. And then we will talk about how we enhance HOMA RPC, uh, streaming RPC. So here's the figure shows how gRPC HOMA supports stream RPC, which is defined as the function stream two way in gRPC HOMA. One single stream RPC consists of seven home RPCs. This process includes seven times of home RPC creation and reclamation, which incurs an ignorable overhead and potential locking contention. And now we design a new HOMA API. For clients to send requests in the same stream using the same HOMA ID, uh, we, we can help the client to reuse the same HOMA ID to save the overhead of creating and reclaiming HOMA RPCs. When the number of ongoing HOMA RPCs is not high, the overhead of locking and the management of HOMA RPCs can be ignored. However, under the heavy traffic load, when there are a lot of ongoing HOMA RPCs, frequently creating and rec reclaiming HOMA RPCs can incur an ignorable overhead and exacerbate lock contention. This, opti this optimization can alleviate this problem. And functional-wise, 
The optimization could also make the implementation of framework like gRPC to easily uh, accommodate uh, HOMA transport, transport protocol. So that's it for all of the enhancements. Uh, as for future improvements, uh, we, we may need to improve our measurement for RTT. We need to distinguish between fabric delay, uh, NIC delay, and software, software delay. Currently, we only uh, measure the uh, end-to-end -end delay. And um, we think we also need to optimize the dynamic window algorithm. Uh, if you have any thoughts, uh, it's welcome. And uh, we will also try to optimize pacer, and we will try to support zero copy on both sender side and, and receiver side. And we also need to do more uh, test for stream RPC enhancements to demonstrate our proposal. So uh, for the conclusion, HOMA is a very promising protocol in RPC context. Automatic and, and dynamic RTT bytes is a better choice than uh, static RTT bytes. And our, our uh, dynamic per peer adjustable window algorithm can improve performance on throughput and latency. And it also can also help buffer over limit resilience in the in cast situation. And it can also help HOMA be compatible with other protocols traffic like TCP. So, uh, any questions? And great talk. Uh, so when you when you mean uh, HOMA can be used for RPC, uh, you mean for intra region, intra data center traffic, right? What is the coexistence or uh, with the enhanced HOMA with long long RTT flows? Uh, long RTT? Yeah. Uh, I mean, so for uh, after uh, we optimize HOMA, HOMA can like uh, better handle the long messages situation because of the like a uh, uh, dynamically adjust the uh, window for law messages yeah okay no, but uh, but would, would the enough, uh, enough credits be shared between long rtt and short rtt take into account the fairness uh, of the of the difference in the rtts as well along with the congestion yeah so uh, we will have uh, like different rtt bytes for like different situation uh, depends on the um, uh, downlink uh, speed yeah okay. got it and uh, and the real time rtt Okay, and uh, is this tested from uh, between um, milliseconds and microseconds level flows, or within milliseconds is what? Uh... Uh, actually, uh, this can this can be a configurable uh, parameter decided by us or decided by your uh, like uh, uh, requirements. Yeah. Any other questions? I have a question. There's no other question. So, um, in the case of, of the incast, the drops are on the downing from the switch or in the NIC or where? Uh, we assume the incast is in the downlink of the of the receiver. So the switch or the NIC? Uh, uh, should should be the NIC, because uh, Homa assumes that there will be no congestion uh, in the core network. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, so what, what's the size of the buffer on the switch then? If that's where the drops are, do you know? Uh, not not sure about that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you.